rust or anything on those, or there better not be. If there is, they need to be replaced. Uh, it, this is much better set up to machine because it is riding on those. It's much more accurate than being squeezed between the adapters because, like I said, one little piece of dirt in the adapter can cause that rotor not to be machined correctly. Whereas this one, is, it's very difficult not to set this one up. If, the only way you could is if you don't use a correct adapter. Okay? When you go to remove these, of course this is going to want to spin. If you use the momentum of the machine, it makes it a little bit easier. So just roll it back and then pop it forward. Get it rolling back and then pop it forward. You're not going to machine that one? No, you don't have time. Once again, your adapters and all of your stuff gets hung up here. There's probably going to be some grease left on here. Um, if there is, wipe it off. Clean it off the adapters. And then before you install this back in the vehicle, you're going to want to wipe out any dirt and grease that's in here because there are going to be metal shavings that get inside of here. There's still a film of grease in here, and it's, this stuff's going to stick to it. If you don't clean it out and put it back together, then these can these will cause the bearing the wheel bearings to fail. All right, uh, brake drum. Brake drums you can get hub or hubless. This particular one is hubless. It sets up exactly like a hubless brake rotor. We're going to use our adapters. We need to find an adapter that'll fit inside of here and still allow that cutting bit to get into here. So we're going to have to get into here. So find your adapter. We are going to need a different cutting head on here, so we're going to remove the cutting head. And if you over tighten this, this stub will break. Okay, so please don't be careful. Make sure any, clean off any um, metal shavings that are on the, that the top. And then just like the other cutting head, the, the, the uh, double bit cutting head, this can be slid in and out. We want this to be as close as possible to the mounting surface to reduce any vibration. Once we get it set on there, next goes what? What do we put on after the adapter? The, the spring. The right. spring, right? Remember, there's a groove in here for that spring. Very good. And before we put this drum on here, what should be done to it? Clean. Clean's the second thing that should be done. Measured. Yeah, it should be measured. We have a, what's called a drum micrometer that will measure this opening and make sure that it's not beyond its refinished thickness or its discard thickness as well. Okay, so we should measure. Then we do want to take a piece of sandpaper and clean this area up just like we did on the brake rotor because it is getting sandwiched between two adapters. We want to find an adapter that fits. Oh, first shot. We're a lucky guess. And we're going to mount it on the brake lathe just like we would mount it on the car. We need another adapter. And remember, the grooves face each other on the adapters. Spacers. We are going to need to use a silencer band just like we did with the rotors, except our silencing band for the drums is a little bit wider. Okay, and that's to take up for this extra width. Um, this is much more apt to vibrate than a brake rotor is because you've got all this metal out here and it's all being supported inside by a very thin piece of metal uh, smashed in between these. 
adapter. So it can, these can vibrate. You have to be really careful with them. Okay? Now, what we want to do, just like with the other one, is we need to get this set so that we can get it inside of here and, re and remove metal from it. Now, right now I'm turning this handle and nothing's happening. That's because this has been backed up beyond the limits of the, the threads. Okay? It's kind of, it has a screw inside of it and I backed it up so far that it's now past that screw and no matter how much I turn this, it won't win. I promise you, before the end of the school year, someone is going to come up and, a and ask me how to how to fix this problem, even though I'm going to show you how to do it today. What you have to do is push in as you're turning, and then it'll catch the end of the threads, and then it, you can run it in. Now, before, our feed was done through here, and that's how we did our cutting. Now we're going to do it through these controls over here. Um, and I don't have time to completely set this up and, and actually machine this drum. What we're going to do is, once you get this cutting head set, you lock it down just like the other one. And all you need to be is just tight enough so that you can't move that. Make sure your locks are off. this in inside of here, turn the machine on, and we would move this out until the brake, until the bit makes contact with the drum and you'd hear it, just like we did with the brake rotor. At that point in time, this has a scale on it as well, we would add two to it and then lock this down. Remember the locks on the cutting bits on the other one? Mm -hmm. We're going to lock this down um, and then what we would do is set our speed. Right now it's set on two, which is a very slow speed. And um, the machine should be on when you change this, but we're gonna run this up to about 15. Not all the way up to 20, I'll, up to about 15. And then once a bit was, you know, once a bit was making contact, throw this lever, and then the drum physically moves away from the cutting bit, and that's how, and that's how it cuts it. Once it's done, Stop it, and then you repeat the process until it completely cleans up. Unlock, add to, lock, and then your final pass, just like with on the rotors, would be on slow speed. So you move it down, not necessarily down to two, but you move it down to say four or six, lock this down, and then you would do a slow cut. How would you move this scratch? Now, yeah, good question. The unidirectional finish doesn't matter as, on, on this like it does the brake pads because of the uh, drums themselves. Now you do want to be careful that you don't leave a deep or a very noticeable groove because if there's a heavy enough groove that you cut into there, it can cause the brake pads to lift off the backing plates and slap. Alright, uh, put your safety glass away please. Have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.